Hi, I'm Carol Angela Davis coming to you via Skype. Today is Tuesday. It's July 5th, 2011. Hope you had a fabulous uh, July 4th weekend. We're going to begin with some news for you today from the nation's capital and on the debt ceiling. The Obama administration and congressional ne negotiators, of course, uh, racing to find a deal to raise the federal debt ceiling of $14.3 trillion by August 2nd. And they really have to do it about a week in advance. Uh, because of some other moves that have to happen there on the, in the nation's capital to bring everything into fruition. The negotiations, as you know, are ongoing. President Obama having to take the lead after key Republicans have backed out of these critical negotiations. So critical they backed out. I'll tell you what they think of us. Uh, because the president is insisting that we tax the rich. <laughs> these guys are good. They'll do anything to keep the tax, the tax increases off the rich people. Now, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, for his part, what he's doing is he has introduced, he's a Democrat from New Mexico, he has introduced a, a measure insisting that any deal to reduce the federal deficit include tax increases on Americans earning more than a million dollars a year. It sounds reasonable to me. And most of the people who earn more than a million dollars a year, guess what? They get it. They have no problem having their taxes increase. Okay, Reid calls his measure a sense of the Senate. It is kind of a pledge which members of the Senate would vote yes on if they support Reid's call for higher taxes on the rich. Now, don't expect any support from the Republicans because we all know they don't have a mind of their own. They all vote in a block. They don't care if they agree with the position or not. The important thing for them is to vote together, which does, does that democracy? Because I thought it was everybody's vote counts. They just... You vote your, you know, what you think, but it sounds like some kind of a monarchy or something. But anyway, no one Republican, as we know, can have an original thought. Democrats proposed tax increases. You should know they do include cutting subsidies for oil companies. They've had record profits. I don't think they need any more subsidies. And those, those subsidies are worth $21 billion over 10 years. They also include raising taxes by a few percentage points on the wealthy. And so we have to stand behind the president and hope he gets that job done. In the race for the presidency 2012, we're going to focus a little bit on Tim Paul Linty. As you know, he is the former governor of Minnesota. He's a Republican. Paul Linty has repeatedly stated his stand against government interference in the, in the economy. But is this what he really believes? Here we go again with the Republicans and their double talk. Okay. All right. Consider this. Paul Linty's signature jobs program during his eight years as Minnesota governor, his Department of Employment and Economic Development, or DEED, handed out nearly $150 million in tax breaks to boost the economy economies of the state's most impoverished areas. But did it work? Well, an evaluation by Minnesota's Office of, Legisla of the Legislative Auditor from, found, among other things, that more than 60 subsidy agreements that set a deadline for businesses to hire new employees did not require them to maintain the employees. So once again, the rich get richer. All you have to do is hire somebody. You don't have to maintain a week, a month, six months, whatever it is. You hire them. You get the tax break. You go on about. You get the subsidy. You go on about your business. The person doesn't last. You fire them. You whatever for whatever reason they they are, they are disconnect from the business. Guess what? You still got yours. They didn't get theirs. But then this is America, and let's face it, in the Republican administration, this is not about anybody but the rich, the poor people. Be damned. All right, we should also tell you that some of these firms, though they had been awarded some $7 million in tax breaks, were forced to repay a paltry $285,000 when the programs did not work. And Minnesota's job growth rate, well, you should know this, that under Republican Tim Paul Lente's eight-year regime, it was only 0.5 percent. And you should know that even if you're planning on voting Republican, you should know that is the worst among the ex-governors vying for the GOP nomination. So if you're a Republican, that's not your guy. Okay? Let's go on. Former our IMF chief, Inter International Monetary Fund chief Dominic Strauss-Kahn, is not entirely off the hook. A French writer is expected to file legal documents today, uh, file a legal complaint against him today in France. Her name is Tristaine Bagnon. She is alleging that Dominique Strauss-Kahn tried to rape her. That's what she says. She says Dominique Strauss-Kahn Strauss tried to rape her during an incident nine years ago. The move comes just as a U.S. case against Dominique Strauss-Kahn, as we know, is in the process of collapsing. Apparently, the French writer says she went to interview Strauss-Kahn, a former French finance minister, uh, in an apartment in Paris, and she says she was 22 at the time, she says he insisted on holding her hand during the interview. I don't think so. Uh, before making advances that led to her fighting him off as he tried to undo her clothing. This guy is not innocent. He might be lucky here in the United States, but there's something with his smoke. We all know there is usually 
fire somewhere. Okay, now let's turn to your health. What is the role of environmental factors in causing autism? Please pay attention to this. According to a new study out of the University of California, San Francisco, and Stanford University, and published in the latest issue of the Archives of General Psychiatry, environmental factors account for about 62% of autism cases. That's right. We're talking prenatal stuff like the possible role of maternal antidepressant use before and during the pregnancy. The study of 298 autistic children in the Kaiser Permanente Northern California system found a twofold increase in the risk of the disorder when the mothers took antidepressants at some point in the year before giving birth. Please pay attention to that. Looking at some other news and talking still about your health, we go to diabetes. The news is not good. The United States is one of the highest, has one of the highest diabetes rates in the developed world, and the disease, we should tell you, is spreading faster here than in other uh, rich nations. That is the word from the medical journal Lasset. Now, we all know about the link between diabetes and cheap high fructose corn syrup, but what about this? Is it true that exposure to certain pesticides and other toxic chemicals are also to blame? A new peer-reviewed study published in the journal Diabetes Care found a strong link between diabetes onset and blood levels of a group of harsh industrial chemicals known as persistent organic pollutants or POPs and also organochlorine pesticides. Apparently these pesticides and these POPs have been banned in the United States for many, many years, but they still end up in our food. They get there by accumulating in the fatty tissue of animals which we eat. The animals transfer that to us because we eat meat and fish, including farmed salmon. And I have to tell you, in this study, uh, they, did, they went to a Dallas supermarket and they looked at the farmed meat and fish, and they found that there are more of these chemicals in the farmed salmon than in any other meat or fish. So you better watch it. Don't, don't buy the farmed salmon. It's not worth it. The bottom line is we have to find out what's getting to the bottom of all this diabetes. And the fact is, even though these chemicals were banned for years, they're still on the ground. They're coming up. The animals are eating the, the, the foliage. They're eating, and we're eating the animals. And it's coming into our system. It's causing diabetes. So please pay attention to that. Those are your stories for today. Today is Tuesday. It is July 5th, 2011. I'm Carol Angela Davis coming to you via Skype. Hope you follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place, new stories. Have a good day.